we find ourselves this weekend well and truly back into the run of ordinary time in the church's calendar and we resume our readings from the Gospel of Mark. We move back in time from recent readings by some distance to a time not long after the calling of the Twelve, when Jesus began his teaching ministry, though the teaching of the crowds outside of his closest confidence was confined entirely to parables. Today we have heard two of several parables that Jesus spoke to a large crowd on the occasion when he preached to them from a boat due to the large numbers who had gathered. In the first of these, Jesus is really counselling his followers to patience as well as trust. He's an example of the natural growth of a food crop. The sower of the seed, which we could assume to be Jesus himself, although the parable worked perfectly well even without this assumption, does not expect instant results. No worthwhile crop springs up overnight, although any gardeners among you will know that weeds seem to have this ability. The sower places his trust in nature, taking it for granted up to a point that things are happening out of sight beneath the ground. Even when the first green shoots emerge from the soil, the wise farmer does not rush out and snatch these up. Instead, he nurtures them, having to grow healthily towards maturity when they will produce the crop that he wants. Many of those gathered on the shore may have been expecting Jesus to solve the ills of the world at a stroke, ending the injustices around them terminating the rule of their oppressors and establishing a kingdom of justice, perhaps even restoring Israel to its former glories. Through the parable, he makes it clear that this is not going to happen. The seed of his word has been sown and unseen forces are at work to bring them to fruition. Just as the crop needs the right season to be ready for the harvest, the unseen work of the Holy Spirit is moving things towards the end intended by God and will not be rushed by our wishes. There's only so much that the farmer can do to encourage his crop to grow to the necessary size to maximise his crop, but his interventions, weeding, watering and nurturing, will help it to happen in the right time. In the same way, we cannot cause the kingdom of God to a reality any sooner than God himself has ordained. But like the farmer, our small contributions can help the kingdom to grow. By working with the Spirit, sharing the word of God and the teaching of Jesus with others, we can nurture the kingdom that is to come, helping it to grow until God ordains that is right become a reality that will indeed change the world forever. <clears throat> if the first parable is about timing and patience, then perhaps the second is about size and scale. I wonder if any of you grew mustard and cress as a child. I recall in one of our classes we scattered the tiny seeds on damp blotting paper and over a fairly short time we saw small green plants begin to grow. We never gave the mustard time to grow into a tree, but the miracle of growth was there before our eyes. Jesus chooses the mustard seed as an example of the way that the kingdom of God will grow in the world. From small beginnings, it will grow in time to something to encompass and govern the entire world. The seed cast on the ground in this parable is most definitely the words of Christ, spoken often in remote places to relatively small numbers of people, initially by mouth, then in letters from those who had heard the word, and later in books of scripture, it would spread across the world until it reaches everyone, although sadly not all will listen. But growth is required also by us as individuals, as well as within our community. 
the word of God placed in our minds must take root in our hearts and begin to grow. The call of Christ demands a response for each of us. Through prayer and faith, we need to foster the call to discipleship within ourselves, for we can even contemplate sharing it with others. In another power about a sower, earlier in this same chapter, Jesus has already illustrated the fact that not all seed will take root and grow to fruition. We need to ensure that the seed of his word is well established within us and nurtured and encouraged to growth. We can also consider other seeds that are cast into the world that may or may not take root and grow. These seeds can take many forms. A kind word, a moment of prayer, a song perhaps, even a smile shared with a stranger. We cannot know what action of ours will reach another person. I'm personally very aware that I cannot know what word of mine will touch someone, to provoke a thought, or bring a crumb of comfort, or to encourage somebody else's journey of faith. Sometimes what I think of my best attempts at preaching seem to fall flat, but at other times I feel what I thought was a poorer attempt has touched someone in an unexpected way. Both of today's parables refer to the inexorable and unstoppable growth of the kingdom of God, which will reach fulfillment when the time is right. Despite many attempts of a history to prevent it, including the indifference to faith that seems to be the threat in our current world, nothing has prevented the growth of the gospel in all corners of the world even as the so-called first world seems to be turning away from faith, we can see it growing and flourishing in Africa and South America. What we can do to encourage the growth of the kingdom in our own hearts, in our community, and with anyone we meet when the chance arises. Nature is the force that causes crops to grow, but the work of the farmer still helps it to grow stronger and produce more. In the same way, the Holy Spirit is the force that is driving the growth of the kingdom of God. But we, in our small way, can encourage and strengthen this growth by prayer, preaching and acts of charity. We can sow our own seed by the way we follow the teaching of Christ and making it our way of life, thus also helping the growth of the kingdom itself. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.